Hey guys, Dr. Simpson with Stem Cells for Dogs. Um, I got the question the other day about what are some non-surgical options for treating my dog with hip dysplasia? Well, basically, unfortunately, prior to really Huck DT therapy, there wasn't a whole lot of great ways of treating your hip dysplasia. In severe cases, you may take them to surgery and do a full hip replacement, but unfortunately in dogs, that didn't last but a couple of years because just the wear and tear and the dynamics and the physics of the joints are just different than they are in humans. So even doing surgery in a hip dysplasia dog is difficult. Um, and so that left us with basically med medical management. And unfortunately, this is not a great option, but it's the only option we really have. So prior to using stem cell therapy, basically we had NSAIDs, so non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, kind of like your Tylenol, aspirin type of drugs um, to help decrease pain and inflammation. We would use nutraceuticals such as fish oils and glucosamines to help kind of increase the joint fluid and help to decrease inflammation in the joint itself. Um, we would do restricted exercise or Sometimes, you know, physical therapy where, you know, water treadmills and things just to keep the muscle mass up so the joint could move smoother, so the body could compensate. Um, one of the biggest things that was used as treatment and still is highly, highly recommended is keeping your pet on an adequate weight. Um, being overweight, it affects them, especially when you have a bad hip because all their weight is being carried and transferred. So if you're carrying an additional five, six pounds as a dog to 10 pounds as a bigger dog, that's a whole lot of extra weight and in every step is painful, that's undue pain that you're taking every time because you're just a little overweight. So weight management is one of the number one managements for at home kind of hip dysplasia. And that's something that all clients really need to be aware of and, and all their pets, regardless of whether it's hip dysplasia or knees or arthritis or what it is. Um, so, you know, that's really, those were the major ways of treating hip dysplasia for years. It's basically drugs, you know, and they got really bad. You might put them on painkillers, you know, and basically you had a dog that was kind of sedated and on painkillers and pain medications, but that's really all we had. Now there are newer modalities that are being used to help treat um, hip dysplasia. Now why they can't eliminate it, they can't get rid of it because it's an anatomical disease because the bones don't line up like they should they can help prevent some of the side effects and help treat and give therapy to some of the side effects that they see from these ill-lined joints. Um, cold laser therapy works very well. We sometimes will see acupuncture done. Um, stem cell therapy now comes in this whole branch of possible other therapies that can help decrease some of the pain and inflammation because if they get it, the cells can go in, decrease inflammation and decrease pain, decrease the rub on the joints and actually expedite some of the healing process, you can help preserve some of the joint. So all of these ways are different ways of treating hip dysplasia, but the true trick comes in combining them all into a multimodal therapy that helps your pet. And that may be NSAIDs with glucosamines, with stem cell therapy. It may be a combination of cold laser with acupuncture and stem cell therapy. It may be, for really painful dogs, painkillers. For some dogs, it may be surgery. But you know, treatment of hip dysplasia, it starts early. So when you catch the initial signs, that's where a lot of these therapies, if we can prevent the damage, is where we need to go. So I hope that answers some of those questions of what do we do for hip dysplasia? Like how can you fix that or how can you help that? And gives you a little brief introduction into the medicine behind what we do.